Hi, I'm Emmy Louie, and I'm asking you to support 220 mile per hour electrified high speed rail trains with dedicated rights of way and with grade separations. I know, that sounds like a handful. Well, you may ask, what's wrong with what we are doing now? My answer is this. Some of the quote unquote high speed rail trains being proposed in this current administration is not fast enough and doesn't use clean technology. Although many trains seem to have the same appearance at first, but 125 mile per hour diesel trains versus 220 mile per hour electrified trains are as different as motor scooters versus a golf cart and gasoline cars versus an electric car. This first group is powered by an internal combustion engine and the latter group is powered by electricity. One is polluting and the other can be potentially green, that is, not pollute. Let me tell you more. 220 mile per hour electrified trains are the world standard for high speed rail. They receive their power through electric catenary lines. The electric catenary lines gets its power from electricity generated by a number of sources, including renewable energy resources. On the other hand, 125 mile per hour diesel trains get their power from diesel fuel stored in the train itself. You may ask, why can't we go with 125 mile per hour diesel trains first, then upgrade to 220 mile per hour electric trains later? Well, I am pleading with you that we, nor the Earth, don't have time to tinker with 125 mile per hour diesel trains for 10, 20, 30 years and then upgrade to 220 mile per hour trains later. We need to be prepared for an oil depleted society where we can't depend as much on oil as we did in the 20th century to power our transportation as we are already past peak oil as illustrated in this diagram. The proposal for 125 mile per hour diesel trains are remnants from the early 1990s time period, a time when Amtrak survival was being threatened and train usage was low compared to the pre-World War II era. It is now a different time we are confronting climate change and oil depletion and an economic period where the fast movement of goods and people are critical if we are to be competitive on the world stage. The United States does not want to be caught with our pants down when gasoline reaches $6 a gallon or more. Also, high performance 220 mile per hour electric trains are far superior in reliability, safety, and smoothness of ride than 125 mile per hour diesel trains. Besides, it is predicted that once the already approved 220 mile per hour electrified line from San Francisco to Los Angeles route is open, riders will not want to go back to older and slower technology. So why waste our time with old technology? Don't get me wrong, there are limitations to both types of trains. However, the train control technologies are different. Let me tell you about the 125 mile per hour diesel trains which uses the human eye and a GPS type tracking system for train control. According to tests done in Europe's TGV system, it just so happens that the human eye can only judge oncoming trains in difficult conditions of fog, snow or rain at up to 125 miles per hour. With 220 mile per hour electric trains, the train control, control technology called a continuous information transmission which is transmitted back to a centrally located station so even when trains are traveling 220 miles per hour another train going 220 miles per hour can follow four to five minutes after the first train has left the station. Great separation is also important. These are examples of grade separated crossings and these are examples of on grade crossings. One can see here that grade separated crossings allow for virtually no collisions compared to on grade crossings. Grade separation also allows for unimpeded access for both trains and cars in these scenarios. Dedicated rights of way are also important many train operators need to be able to access the train tracks in order to allow for businesses to compete on a level playing field. 
What I propose is a separation of infrastructure from the trains itself. The infrastructure does not necessarily need to be nationalized, like how it's done in parts of Europe. The infrastructure can be owned by a private company, similar to a condominium association. When a development agency owns the property and the individuals own the condominiums on the property. So please, support 220 mile per hour electrified high speed rail trains with dedicated rights of way with great separations. We don't have time to wait. This is Emmy Louie.